Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, March 15th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, of course, Microsoft patched Tuesday, and it was a bit larger than normal, given that Microsoft skipped the February edition. In February, we only got Adobe's bulletin, which was, as usual, republished by Microsoft. So 18 bulletins total, a bit more than normal, not necessarily twice than normal, but given that some of the bulletins probably got combined between February and March, like for example, the Internet Explorer and Internet Edge bulletin. As mentioned in a diary I wrote up earlier today, probably the most scary bulletin here is the one that affects SMB servers. There are a total of five different vulnerabilities that are being addressed by this bulletin that do allow remote code execution vulnerabilities for unauthenticated users. So this does indeed sound quite vulnerable, certainly very dangerous given that SMB is still often exposed. Now, Microsoft also rates the exploitability of these vulnerabilities with one, which is the lowest rating that Microsoft offers and means that we will likely see exploits for these vulnerabilities. And then we got two more server related bulletins. The first one, MS1715, which affects Outlook Web Access and MS1716, which affects IIS. Both of them are cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So what you can do with that particular vulnerability depends very much on the user. You can snare into clicking on the link or get exposed to the JavaScript. There are also six different bulletins that either fix a vulnerability that already has been exploited or one that has been disclosed. The first bulletin, MS-17.6, that's the Internet Explorer bulletin. It does fix an information disclosure vulnerability. It has been publicly disclosed, but not yet used in any exploits. MS-17.7 also fixes a second, the same vulnerability for Microsoft Edge. In addition to the information disclosure vulnerability, there is also a remote code execution vulnerability in Microsoft Edge that has been disclosed publicly before the patch was released. MS-1712, that's a denial of service vulnerability. This is the famous SMB vulnerability that has uh, been demonstrated quite a lot over the last month or so since it has become known. Now, Microsoft interestingly says it hasn't really been exploited. What this really means in Microsoft speak is that it hasn't been seen sort of in an exploit where a company got compromised or so using this vulnerability. Of course, uh, this vulnerability has been exploited quite heavily in demos. MS-1713 does fix four GDI privilege escalation vulnerabilities. Now, one of them has already been exploited. Typically, uh, this type of vulnerability would be used in as part of a more targeted attack uh, to uh, then elevate privileges to become an administrative uh, user. It has not been disclosed publicly, but in this case, it has been exploited in actual attacks. MS-1717, another privilege escalation vulnerability, this time in the Windows kernel, also has been publicly disclosed. And the final one, MS-1722, that's an XML core services problem. It's an information disclosure vulnerability that has already been exploited. Now, this will actually target the client. So a malicious XML document would be loaded into the client and the attacker would be able to learn if certain files exist or don't exist on disk. So a little bit limited uh, type of uh, information disclosure. So as far as patch priorities go, uh, MS-1710, the SMB vulnerability with the remote code execution, certainly something to consider here. But uh, then again, you should uh, mitigate this on your border. 
probably the Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge vulnerabilities and of course the Adobe Flash vulnerabilities are the ones that I would start out with and then move my way through the other critical bulletins. Whether or not MS 1710 becomes a huge issue really depends a lot on when we will see an exploit for any of these vulnerabilities. At that point, we may also be able to learn more about what can actually be exploited and achieved with this vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. So given that we had a really two months worth of patches to talk about, don't really have any time right now for anything else, but tomorrow we'll return to our usual diet of exploits and security news. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.